Hello everyone, welcome to my 10.2 Vengeance Team Hunter Guide for Season 3. There's been some major changes to the Talent Tree and Tier Set. Feldev is now a 45 second base cooldown, which gets reduced to 27 seconds with Dark Lair Boon. There's a new talent called Illuminated Sigil that gives 20% parry from Sigil of Flame, and it gives you two charges of every single sigil, including Legion Decree, Misery, Silence, and Chains. There's easy access to Cycle of Binding now, Fell Flame Fortification, and Sigils of Chains, which gives you a lot of utility and defensiveness. Firebrand also now spreads and ticks every second instead of two seconds, making it feel significantly better for AoE pulls. The new tier set also gives way more Sigil of Flame uptime and damage. It also generates way more souls, particularly in AoE, which means more Painbringer stacks, more CDR on Demon Spikes if you're expecting to feed the Demon, and a lot more Spirit Bombs. So all of this just means that Demon Hunter relies a lot less on big cooldowns to survive, and a lot less ramping that we saw in Season 2, where you had to spread all your Fiery Brands and then finally get started. There's a lot less of that. Threat generation is also much better with all of upfront damage and Furl Glaive actually got buffed, making your range generation a little bit better. Calcified Spikes also now applies when you refresh Demon Spikes, rather than waiting for Demon Spikes to drop, which is a huge quality of life change, making it much easier to keep up Calcified Spikes. Darkness now is 30% chance to avoid damage in M+, specifically, which is actually insane. It's probably the best group wide defensive CD now. Let's go over the gear. For stats, you'll want roughly the same as before, which is just haste, crit, and verse. All three of them are really good stats. This weapon from Raid will also be super good if you can get it. For trinkets, you should go for the Prophetic Stone Scales, which comes from Dawn of the Infinite. This is a cheat death trinket, super good, highly recommend. And for the second trinket, I would go for Fire X Trinket, which comes from the last boss. This gives you a large absorb on a minute and a half cooldown, and it does a decent bit of damage. If not, there are other options. This one from Raid gives you very good damage. Same with this one right here, Augury. And this one's also pretty good for damage. This one's a really good stat stick as well from Raid. These four trinkets are all from Raid. If you have no way of getting any of these trinkets and you want to get from only M+, you can also get one of these two trinkets. This one's from Dawn of the Infinite and this one's from Dark Heart Ficket. These are just stat sticks. So go for Prophetic Stone Scales and then one of these other seven or so trinkets. As for embellishments, you pretty much go for the same thing. Go for Slimy Boots and you can go for the Toxified Patch. Then, once you have a lot of Zockets, you can go for Elemental Lariat over the Toxic Patch. Elemental Lariat just gives you a bunch of stats, and it scales based off of the number of Sockets you have on. Alright, now let's take a look at the reworked Talent Tree. For the base tree, this is basically what you go for, you don't really change from this. You go for Fellblade now because you are using way more Spirit Bombs, which means you need much more Fury. If you want to go for Purge in this tree, you would have to drop Aura of Pain. Down here, you can also drop Demon Muzzle for reduced Darkness CD if you want. Darkness is extremely powerful now, it's 30% chance to avoid any damage. On the spec tree, this will be the default build for most of you guys. It has no sigil of chains, which is kind of boring, but it does very high damage and it's super tanky. You've got all the defensive components from Painbringer, Void Reaver, stacked with Soul Crush, and you've got Firebrand spreading, and there's the Dark Lair Boon, which gives you a short Fell Dev CD. This talent right here is a must have. This is the only mandatory talent, I would say. The Firebrand talents are super good in this build because Firebrand spreads every second now rather than two seconds, and Sigil of Flame does a ton of damage now, meaning you're doing crazy amounts of AoE damage every time you have Firebrands up. If you want a bit more of a defensive, super high key fortified build similar to last season, I would go with this build right here. So this build, you drop all of the Soul Crush stuff, which means you lose a lot of damage, and you actually lose a lot of single target tankiness in particular. But you do pick up Sigil of Chains, which is really nice, and you do have Feed the Demon in Last Resort. Feed the Demon means that you basically can spam spikes forever. You will never run out of spikes, and you will just be passively really tanky 
which makes it really nice for fortified trash. It's also kind of hard to mess up with this build. With this build, you can also drop some damage like Ascending Flames and pick up uh, Void Reaver. You can also drop Sigil of Chains, pick up one of these. And for one last build is keeping Soul Crush, but taking Sigil of Chains. This is the build I've been using a bunch on PTR. I kind of like it. You have one point in Feed the Demon, and I feel like that's enough to give you almost perma spikes uptime, especially in AoE. This also keeps Sigil of Chains, but you do lose all of this Fire Reaper and stuff, which means you are losing a ton of damage by not going down this route. So just default to this build, this is like the high damage. You could use this up to probably like some of the highest keys. And I'd probably like even run this in like tyrannical keys or like keys where you don't want Sigil of Chains. But if you do want Sigil of Chains, I'd probably go for one of these other two builds instead. Alright, here's some footage and let's take a look at how Vengeance plays in keys. So, key starts, I go in, I tag a pack from far with Fro Glaive. Meta right away since it's a large pull. You can honestly just meta the first pull every single time. Firebrand pretty early on so it starts spreading. Keep my Sigil of Flame up. I also tossed a Sigil of Flame earlier in the pack so that I can get the 20% parry right away. You're super tanky right away with just spikes and Sigil of Flame. But obviously this is a bigger pull so we have more going on. So again, keep Sigil of Flame up at all times. Combined with the Fiery Brand, it actually does crazy amounts of damage. And you're going to want to weave in Allegiant Decrees every time you Spirit Bomb. So it usually looks something like get to 5 souls, Spirit Bomb, Allegiant Decree, Spirit Bomb again. Also just continue to keep Sigil of Flame up on the mobs at all times. I have it tracked over here. Make sure using Immor Aura on CD so it's extending your brands and your Sigil of Flames. And you can honestly just spam spikes if you're doing a larger pull like this. Well, assuming you have uh, Feed the Demon. So going into new pull, same thing. Sigil of Flame right away. This generates way more aggro than ever before because Sigil of Flame actually does a ton of damage now. So by me Sigil of Flaming every single mob, I should have a crazy amount of aggro. Then straight into a Fel Dev. Since Fel Dev is such a short CD, you just want to get the tankiness right away. Firebrand when it's up. And same thing, just keep up Sigil of Flame. Weave in Decrees. And just get out as many Spirit Bombs as you can. And yeah, Demon Hunter is actually pretty simple to play compared to before. As long as you're maintaining your Sigil of Flames and keeping spikes up, you should be very tanky. It's basically a Blood Decay with permanent Dancing Rune Weapon. Because like right now I have about 50% parry and 15% or so dodge. Alright now here are some examples of some pretty cool uses of Demon Hunter utility that you can't do with any other tank. Here's us setting up the pole. Attack two sides here. There are six total casters. All these casters are extremely dangerous. I drop a grip sigil in the middle. It gets them all grouped up. Drop a fear. All these mobs are nice and tightly stacked, except for this one oracle. Pull the boss back, Sigil of Flame to break it. Group them once more to tightly group them. Silent Sigil. And then one more Silent Sigil with the Oppressive Roar. Boom, right there, 12 second silence. And I still have a fear, a grip, and a stun to stop these casters. So there's a Chaos Nova, grip again. And they're all dead. This is part of why Demon Hunter is so insane for this patch. And this type of utility would be huge for a lot of these heavy caster pulls. So that should cover all the important topics for 10.2 Demon Hunter. If you have any questions regarding Demon Hunter still, you can leave down a comment below. Also, check out some of the older Demon Hunter guides because a lot of it is still relevant. So whenever you guys ask about like Soul Cleave versus Spirit Bomb, that's been addressed in the past two Demon Hunter videos. So I would highly recommend checking that out. 
But yeah, with that said, thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully you guys have everything you need to know about Demon Hunter and have fun.